Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to understand electrostatic discharge and then how would we protect our circuit at the input from such a phenomena and also understand output protection circuits. Okay, let's get started with what is an electrostatic discharge or an ESD. Electrostatic discharge is the release of static electricity when two objects come into contact. Basically, this phenomena requires a buildup of an electrostatic charge. Let's understand in simple words. When two different materials rub together, this phenomena take place. One of the materials becomes positively charged, the other becomes negatively charged and the positively charged material now has an electrostatic charge and when that charge comes into contact with the right material, it is transferred and we have an electrostatic discharge event. Now this discharge event can damage a device but it can still continue to function but it can damage the device and we need to protect our device from such phenomena. If you want to understand real-time example of what electrostatic discharge is, electrostatic discharge includes the shock one receives when he walks across a carpet and then goes ahead and touches a metal knob, door knob, metal door knob, right? We have all experienced this. Sometimes we get a sudden jerk when we touch a metal knob if we have walked across the carpet. It also can be seen or the static electricity which one feels after drying clothes in a clothes dryer. Many of us would have experienced that as well. So this is electrostatic discharge. And in case of MOSFETs, this static electric charges tend to accumulate on the dielectric. We have a dielectric, right? So SiO2 is a dielectric. Tend to accumulate on the dielectric surfaces and can lead to extremely high voltages. Now, in a MOSFET, at the input, if you apply very high voltages, we'll quickly see what is going to happen. So remember this. Because of ESD, the charges tend to get accumulate on the SiO2 layer or the dielectric. And this can lead to extremely high voltages at the input. Let's see quickly what's going to happen due to that. But before that, let's understand another basic as well. Now we know that in VLSI, where we are going and understanding scaling, we know that the supply voltages are scaled. We also know that the capacitance is in some lower value of femtofarads and the time delay also is in nanoseconds, etc. internally on an IC. But this IC needs to communicate with the external world, correct? Or the printed circuit board where the voltage is, supply voltages might not be as low as used on an IC and so could be the value of the capacitance. So what we have to do is, technically, there has to be an interface between my VLSI or between my CMOS circuits and my external world. And this interface is nothing but an external pad which we connect. So this is the input pad through which we can communicate or the external circuits can communicate with CMOS circuits. Let's similarly draw an output pad as well. So this is an output pad and similarly we can have bi-directional pads as well. Now we just said that input voltages can be very high and it can lead to a problem in case of CMOS circuits. Let's quickly understand that now. So here I've drawn a cross-sectional view. Let's quickly understand what's going to happen. Now MOSFETs are extremely sensitive to electrostatic discharge which I just mentioned or ESD events. This MOS structure has gate thickness oxide TOX. This is TOX, correct? less than 100 amps strong which is approximately equal to 10 nanometers and say the gate voltage which I'm applying is around 3 volts. Then we know that the oxide electric field EOX is given by VG by TOX, correct? And in this case it would be something around 3 into 10 raised to 6 volt by centimeter. Now here is an interesting thing for one to know. The maximum electric field that can be applied across a silicon dioxide insulator is typically of the order of 5 to 10 into 10 raised to 6 volt by centimeter. If the electric field exceeds the value, the breakdown occurs and we know that when oxide breakdown takes place, our transistor characteristics are lost on the entire IC. Even if we have such a bad transistor, only one of them, it will make our entire chip to be useless or we cannot use the chip further. So what did we understand from this clip is right now that if we have an excessively high gate voltage that will lead to an excessively high electric field which will lead to the breakdown of my MOSFET transistor and if such one transistor is also present on my entire IC, my IC can go for a toss. So what we need to do is we need to avoid this breakdown when high input voltages are applied at the gate and for the same we will use input protection circuits. Now we are ready to understand input protection circuits. Input protection circuits are nothing but some circuits 
which are going to design or going to be designed in such a way so that it provides discharge paths away from the transistor. What does it mean? It only means that if the high voltage is applied at the input of the transistor, this circuit will ensure that the high voltages does not reach the gate, but it will have some paths through which that voltage can discharge to ground. And you don't have to get intimidated by big, big terms. The circuits are going to be a combination of diodes and resistors only. So they are very straightforward circuits in that way. 